ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another live crypto trading room on this beautiful Monday. Start to the week. Today is March 11th, 2024. Failure of our Lord. Hopefully everybody is doing absolutely fantastic out there in crypto land. I hope your positions are doing well. I hope you feel good about your positions. I hope you guys slept well through the weekend. We've got a lot to talk about. We have a new weekly closure. So let's talk about our new weekly closure. All right. First things first, let's just go ahead and get back to our PTP system here on the weekly time frame. All right. Of course, what did we have last week? We had a nice positive closure. Bitcoin closed this weekly candle closing at $69,026. All right. So pretty good. Uh, closing well above this breakout line that I had drawn. All right. So we have closed the weekly candle above. Not only do we have a, not only is the high, okay, not only is the high of this weekly candle uh, higher than the previous all time high. But I believe the close is as well. Yeah, not only did we did we wick above and trade higher than the previous all time high, uh, but we resoundingly closed above it to the tune of twenty six dollars here on the Bitstamp chart for spot. So I think that is very powerful. Obviously, this week continuing to tear off. We have seen ETF flows continue here. Here are th it has been days since you've seen me. Shout out cheesy business. Yes to crypto in the chat. Here's what we need to remember. Um, what was I going to say? So life's good. Life's good. Yes. Uh, we are in a nice, very strong weekly bullish trend. We are parabolic. So anytime we're parabolic, all right, FOMO kicks in. All right. So let me make this very clear. All right. From a trade perspective, from the weekly trade out of the consolidation zone, the entry time for this trade has passed. All right. Now, Bitcoin is still an incredible asset, still a strong showing in my portfolio, but just make very well, understand very well that if you're buying Bitcoin up here, you're not buying it as a trader. All right. You're not buying it as a trader. Most likely you are buying it as part of your portfolio and you are going to have to be prepared to sit through drawdown. And it may be a while before you realize immediate profits. But on the other hand, that Bitcoin keeps surging, right? 72,000, the closer we get to 80,000, then people are talking about 90,000 Then people are talking about hundred thousand, right? So these things can go, uh, but just be aware of this, uh, parabolic movement that we are getting. We are redlining on weekly volatility now for the second week in a row, just pointing out the cyclical pattern of this the last time we had redlined weekly volatility uh quite beautiful this and this is i want to point this out so let's get rid of the email so you guys can see this the last time we redlined in volatility was right here and this was during the 2021 run-up all right so what are things to consider we had this very long period of consolidation so we know any breakout out of that consolidation is going to be quite juicy we can see that look we see volatility get crushed right here towards the end of that consolidation period that lets us know that is the signal that lets us know that any expansion now coming out of that range is likely to be a powerful movement and we want to trade in that direction. Now, when we redlined on weekly volatility, as you can see, it was not the end of the rally. It was only about 50% of the way through the rally. We still had about four or five months left to go. Well, three months left to go, really. Um, six months, if you really want to say, to the, to the, to the real all-time high. But we had, after we redlined on volatility, we had, we had three weeks of redlined volatility. Uh, after the initial signal, we did have one more week of limited upside. We went up about another 15%. And then we went sideways for a month, right? And, you know, obviously sharp sell-off, what, from peak to trough there, about a 23% sell-off. So again, I am trying to prepare myself for something like that. I am trying to prepare myself for something like that. If we went sideways here uh, with a 23% pullback, 23% uh, pullback would be coming back to basically fill this fair value gap on this weekly candle, <clears throat> which, you know, again, we, let's not put too much stock in that because we haven't backfilled any fair value gaps on the way up so far, uh, except actually for this one, we backfilled lies. We backfilled this one. Uh, we did not backfill this one. All right. So, uh, and we did not backfill this one. So we really haven't been backfilling any of these fair value gaps. That's totally fine. Uh, so anyways, just be prepared. Uh, things to consider here. Uh, we are continuing to hold the weekly long position because we did get the re-entry signal on this closing candle of the week of February 5th. So we are still swing long on Bitcoin. Uh, I am recommending for everybody to be about 50 to 80% out of the trade at this point in time, 50% 50 to 80% out of the trade. And that way we can be prepared for a pullback. Make sure your stops are in a no loss situation, uh, as in at a break even price or in profit. That's where we want to have our stop losses. Um, you know, of course we can hedge with options. We could short here potentially, 
Uh, but, you know, again, I don't want to pick pennies up in front of a steamroller. And while it is always just beautiful and nice to hit the top and nail the top, um, you know, I have basically sacrificed that as a trader because what that has allowed me to have is less anxiety holding positions through runs and ultimately makes me more money. As nice as it is to nail a top and like really nail a short, here's the thing. Unless that is your primary strategy and you are really good at that, the risk is very high, especially in a bullish environment. And you end up probably losing more money, you know, trying to short everything that you think is a top and getting stopped out. Um, you probably lose more money doing that, trying to get into the good short than you actually make off of the good short. Because if you've just, you know, like tried to call the top six times throughout this rally and you were wrong all six times, like how big are you actually going on size? You know, how big are you actually going on size? And this is something that's very important to remember because most of us struggle with position management and risk management. And so when you've been basically on, if you've been on the wrong side of the trade discretionarily, wanting to grab that juicy short, wanting to get that top, right? Just, just having that mindset, uh, which is a very hard mindset to get out of, right? So I'm, I, I feel you guys, it's, it's difficult. Oh, big buys, big buys, big buys, big buys, big buys. Um, order book just went crazy there. Uh, 72712 now on price. Yeah, so how much size are we actually taking here on shorts? Probably not that much, right? Oh, that was enough buying to make the weekly candle move. That's beautiful. So I'm not recommending anybody try to be calling a top. Don't be soothsayers. Uh, you're going to make more money buying the 20% dip and longing it to the next high than you will probably make shorting the high into the dip. All right, just, just words of wisdom there for, for, for you guys. Uh, all right, no RSI divergence. All right, so no sell signal there. No TSI divergence, nor uh, has TSI crossed underneath the signal line. So TSI is still bullish. RSI is still bullish. And the only thing we want to be concerned about here is the weekly red lined volatility. So again, not a good time to enter into positions. It's a good time to be taking profits and just preparing for the next movement. Daily time frame on BTC, a little bit more granularity. Uh, we are holding the nine EMA very nice. So we have an extremely good bullish trend right now. No bearishness whatsoever. It's over 9,000. We used to have that. We used to have that sound meme clip. It's good times. Um, yeah. Anyways, so uh, let's see here on the daily. Uh, we might actually uh, be re-entering into the swing long on daily close uh, because as we can see, our TSI is hinting. Actually, is like it's hard to see, but is crossing over. We'll confirm at daily close. RSI is crossing back up above the signal line. Those are our continuation entry signals. All right, decent volume. Life is good. Uh, volatility is not redlined. We've had a pullback in volatility. Now, ideally, we would want volatility to come down, uh, but in a very bullish market, you're not always going to get that. So it just depends on what kind of trader do you want to be. Uh, do you want, you know, uh, do you want a perfect setup for each trade? You're going to get fewer signals. That, that's totally fine. You're going to have maximum consistency between your trades uh, where, you know, as we teach in PTP, uh, if there's no signal, there's no trade. Okay, that crossed over, that crossed over. Oh, but volatility didn't come down. So what do we do? So you have to make a decision with your risk as a trader. And since I understand that we're in the bull market, my philosophy is get while the getting is good. Uh, and what if I'm wrong, what am I going to do? Lose 2%? I don't care. What's my upside? 8%? Okay, let's. I'll take that all day long. Uh, so in this particular situation, I will probably proceed uh, with, I'll probably just going to proceed at 2% risk, right? I could say, you know, the, the, the principal thing to do would be to say, okay, well, I'm going to reduce risk since volatility didn't come down uh, even below the 50th percentile. So volatility is still quite high. Uh, but I just know that that's how things are in bull markets. So I'm going to take that risk. Uh, if the candle closes as it is right now, I will be swing longing on the daily time frame for a re-entry signal. Uh, Four-hour time frame. Uh, we're still swing long uh, in the copy trade account from the four-hour signal. Let me load up uh, Faradesk here for you guys. Proof of trade. Of course, all you guys copy trading me do know. Yep, so we are still... Swing long from the four hour signal here. Nothing, nothing. I mean, nothing, no, nothing to do there. Um, yeah. oh, entry target stop loss. Yeah, all there. Nice and good. Um, yeah. And we entered, yeah, just right. Yeah. On this candle. Yeah. We entered, um, but we entered slightly before that. We did enter slightly before that. So no exit signals here on the four hour time frame. Uh, RSI is, of course, overbought, but no divergence. TSI is still trending strongly, and we do not have redlined four hour volatility. So the four hour signal is still quite good, targeting 75, 479. Uh, and if you know these buys coming in are any indication, I think we're going to hit that very quickly. All right, hourly time frame. Hourly time frame life is good. 
Uh, we did get that hourly signal on this candle as well, on this nice, uh, beautiful breakout candle. Uh, we, you know, potentially could have entered earlier, but you know, whatever. Uh, you know, holding throughout this redlining volatility, perhaps we take slightly slight profit throughout this range. Kind of a tricky area to trade, of course, I understand. Uh, but no RSI divergence. TSI is still nice and strong. So I think that hourly signal is still quite good. The RSI has not kicked us out of that trade yet. So we would have entered here uh, and you would be up, oh, about two, two and a half percent uh, based on the uh, based on the hourly uh, signal here for Bitcoin. So uh, in summary, uh, we are still weekly swing long. Uh, we are potentially going to be daily swing long at the end of today's close. We are four hour swing long. Uh, and I'm not trading the hourly right now, but just showing you the signal, showing you how you can apply this to the hourly chart so you can trade more frequently if you desire uh, to take these methodologies and these practices down to the lower time frames and trade where you feel more comfortable. That's totally fine. Um, yeah, so let's skip. Uh, let's check out the intraday chart. Do we see any kind of opportunities here uh, on the 15 minute chart? Again, uh, nice expansion of volatility, huge amount of volume coming in here. So we do have nice support now at 72314 intraday. Um, if we were to see if we were to see plunges, where would I expect price to go? I would expect to see price go down to 7956. Uh, if we were going to grab long side liquidity. Uh, we do have some divergence coming in here actually from from um, Isospot here on the 15 minute. So this movement might actually fail and we could potentially see that plunge. Uh, down to 70. And if that does happen, and if we don't get any recovery from that uh, by daily close, that would probably invalidate the daily signal. So uh, I'm not going to be shorting this because I don't short in bull markets. Uh, I just disabled the red button and that has saved me a lot of money. I recommend you do it as well. Uh, so when we have a bear and it sucks, right? Because it's nice to it's nice to like play both sides of the trade, right? But I know myself, I know where I'm good. I know where I make money. And in general, if I just if I just trade principled, life is okay. All right, things to watch here, of course, price breaking down below the 15 minute 21 could be an early warning signal here. 72,375 is where that's coming in at. So if we got a 15 minute close below that, potentially if you guys wanted to be adventurous and daring and short down to that 70,000, uh, 900, not 70,000, but 70,900, um, I could definitely see that. Uh, if we did get the pullback to 70,000, like 70,200, um, then we would basically be filling, uh, backfilling this gap over here. But uh, we'll see. Uh, we shall see. Ethereum on the weekly time frame, obviously doing very well. Uh, we do have, of course, a big catalyst coming up next week with the Denkin upgrade or the Cancun Denob upgrade, uh, as it is more important, EIP 4844, uh, which is going to introduce proto dank sharding officially onto the chain. And, uh, you know, that is off the chain, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, but anyways, uh, proto dank sharding is going to be very, very nice. Um, you know, uh, if you guys uh, are kind of, oh, let me just, let's pull up a whiteboard here. I'll give you a the the brief five minute elevator explanation i suppose okay uh so proto dank sharding will basically allow okay so here is here's our here's our layer ones and even our layer twos our layer ones and our layer twos um and you know they're passing transaction data right well they're bridging back and forth between each other but but, uh, you know, UTXOs are being created, transactions are being processed, uh, and typically, typically, uh, that transaction would get mined by a miner and put into a block. Okay? Block. And, you know, we have the mempool and everything, and then gas, and uh, so you guys are familiar with this model. This is fine. Uh, with proto-dank sharding, uh, basically the same thing, right? We still have our layer twos and we'll still have our layer ones. Okay. Uh, but now we're going to take uh, pieces, transaction pieces of data, and we're going to put them in these things called blobs. Okay. And the blobs are actually, it's called blob space. This is real technical lit. All right. I'm not making this up. Blob space, blobs. Proto dank sharding will introduce this idea of blobs, uh, which will have little pieces of transaction data, uh, and they are able to be stored more efficiently and recalled more efficiently. Uh, and then those blobs will essentially later on be reconciled and finally put into um, the layer one, excuse me. So this is going to dramatically, I mean, this is, again, is this the best explanation? No. Uh, am I a programmer? No. Um, so, uh, but what this is going to do practically for most of us, it is going to make a layer two transactions extremely cheap. 
Um, Optimism's best estimates are how much cheaper? Like 98% cheaper. Um, it's going to be a while before we see an immediate effect on Ethereum layer one. This will have the most profound effect immediately on layer twos. Now it will take a few months. Uh, layer twos are going to need to integrate this technology. Uh, but Optimism is kind of at the forefront of integrating EIP 4844. In my opinion, they already have a dashboard up. They already have like the savings chart up. So uh, expect gas fees to get dramatically cheaper on things like Arbitrum, Ethereum, or excuse me, Arbitrum, Optimism, uh, ZK, you know, again, just just pretty much any EVM compatible chain you can imagine, any Ethereum layer two polygon, gas is going to get dramatically cheaper, uh, which, you know, again, uh, a lot of people are speculating that that could lead to a resurgence of the NFT mania uh, because NFT mania has been growing and surging on Solana and with reduced gas fees, dramatically reduced gas fees. Uh, it's uh, it, it's going to be pretty profound. So pretty excited. Uh, again, you know, these these cat the these EIP catalysts do not historically have a dramatic impact on price uh, like we think they would uh, because just the overwhelming market sentiment is a little bit more powerful. Um, so just take that all into effect. Ethereum on the weekly time frame. Uh, getting into the technical analysis again, we are still swing long on on Ethereum. Uh, we have been swing long on Ethereum since the closing candle of February fifth. Uh, so uh, we are up on that position about sixty percent. Uh, we are redlining on volatility, so I'm recommending that people close out. It's like the cloud for blockchain. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Well, the mempool is like the cloud for blockchain. You know what I'm saying? So it's like the uh it's like the cloud of the cloud, so to speak. Um, but instead of a, a you know, one UTXO set being like broken down, one transaction data being broken down and immediately going to the miner and getting included in the block and everything, uh, they'll just be broken down into blobs and they can be processed a little bit later. Uh, which will allow for uh ma well, the big thing too is throughput, right? So um we're moving into the, obviously Ethereum has these kind of epochs laid out and we're done with the merge and we're now moving into the surge and the focus of the surge for Ethereum development for probably the next 18 months to two years is going to be on increasing scalability. So we're going to introduce proto dank sharding. Uh, we're going to get gas fees dramatically down. We're going to introduce count abstraction. All of these things are going to be happening on Ethereum. So it's going to be pretty exciting, honestly, uh, for usability on the Ethereum chain. And if we can just get gas fees down on, on, on Ethereum, the monster, I mean, you know, I've already been de dex trading there a little bit more. But anyways, uh, weekly time frame on Ethereum. Uh, we have a very strong RSI. RSI currently sitting at, 80, at the 84th percentile. We have a very strong TSI. We are redlining in volatility. Of course, we are still in the weekly swing trade. I'm not recommending anybody to enter into the swing trade at this point in time. I'm recommending people take 50 to 50 to 80% profits actually on their positions and just await the next signal, right? We need to wait for price to come and close. Again, it doesn't matter. Uh, individuals, different individuals are using different um, different individuals are using different, uh, exit indications, right? You've got your, you know, you've got your nine exponential moving or simple moving average, which is very good. Of course, that's going to probably take a lot of profits at this point in time. Uh, at this point in time, we're probably going to be looking for RSI to close underneath. Of course, you're always welcome to take discretionary profits at any point that you feel is appropriate. But for me, I'm going to be holding on to my position, uh, with my little moon bag on it. All right. Uh, daily time frame on Ethereum. Daily time frame on Ethereum, extremely strong, holding that 21 exponential moving average very well. Uh, we do not have really, eh, well, we do have a little bit. It's kind of weak, right? We don't we don't have any regu regular bearish divergence on the immediate movement up. And obviously this regular bearish divergence has already pretty much been invalidated in my opinion. Um, yeah, we do have high volatility. Uh, and just, yeah, so let's just recap what we've had going on here. Uh, we are we are swing long on the daily time frame. We did get the re-entry signal on March 6th. This is just last week. Uh, so we are swing long on the daily time frame. Um, and no, nothing to do at this point in time. Nothing to do at this point in time. So swing long on Ethereum daily, uh, relatively newer position, only a week old. Swing long on Ethereum weekly. Uh, we are looking at closing that position mostly out. Four hour time frame on Ethereum. Uh, ooh, 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 ooh. What do we got here? All right, TSI has crossed back above and RSI has crossed back above and we are coming out of volatility crush. Um, so we are actually, uh, we need to be swing long on Ethereum. Apologies.
1974 at 10x is fine. Uh, we'll just put the stop loss for right now. 3891 to 45.40. 38.91 and 45.40. I'm just actually going to set my take profit as the final take profit. All right. Long on Ethereum. Um, let's see here real quick. All right, so that's pretty simple. Hourly time frame, I'm sure. Yeah, so when do we get the signal here? Yes, yeah, so we get the long signal here, but we're redlined volatility, so we don't enter on the hourly time frame. So volatility has reset um, on the hourly time frame, not fully reset like volatility hasn't gotten crushed um i'll probably just i'm just gonna play it on the on the four hour because the hourly is a little less clear ethereum on the 15 what we got today um okay yeah so you know high uh good high volume node uh basically the daily point of control currently sitting at 40 41 so we are of course above that uh, we didn't trade two standard deviations above of course we do have this very strong rally um, strong support at 39.53 for Ethereum. Likely pullback targets down here at 39.90 if we're going to sweep long liquidity. Uh, yeah, we can check out Injective, my YouTube journey. Sharding needs a rebrand. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you say proto-dank sharding, right? And you get all fancy and complicated with it. Like, people don't know what that is. Um, somebody asked about portal, right? Um, and I just bought portal today. Uh, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to convey that on stream, uh, due to the fact that, uh, I put that signal out for our members. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I bought portal. Uh, and I've got some pretty big TPs. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, these are, these are three, four X's. So, all right. Um, that's all I got to say about portal. There's, there, there's nothing else to say about it. Right. I bought the chart. I bought the narrative. Um, all right, so daily time frame, let's go through, uh, our assets here, starting with Solana. Can we complete these lines? I'm not sure. I'm sure what they're there for. Anyway. Uh, let's see here. The strategy was calling for, yeah, the strategy is long on Solana. Uh, recommended a swing long on February 29th, daily close uh, at approximately 125.868. And, and we're good, all right? You know, nice, strong, bullish trend. Um, pretty powerful move above. Uh, we just broke and pulled back. Uh, we didn't really pull back all the way to retest uh, uh, resistance as support. Uh, pullback zones, uh, obviously pullbacks gonna occur. Bullish pullbacks are gonna occur between the 21 and the 55 exponential moving average. Closures below the 55 start to get um, start to get a little scary. Let's zoom this bad boy out. Yeah, we are trading above this peak as well. So low volume nodes. So we are at an elevated risk of a throwback right now. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Although the strategy is long, uh, I am seeing an increased risk of a throwback to about 113 to 125, uh, just based on the fact that we just breached this previous high. Uh, no divergence though, no divergence from RSI and volatility has had a nice little pullback here. So definitely has room to expand. Um, next, you know, if we make another big move, uh, the next big target is going to be 207.585 for Solana, uh, which is about another 40% to the upside. No, no, nope. I actually, I am, uh, I am, I'm contractually, uh, prohibited from analyzing that coin. Yes to crypto. I apologize. All right. Uh, so overall, Solana looks good on the daily time frame. Uh, doesn't look like we have a good entry here, though. Um, 
of course you could like risk it for the biscuit, but I wouldn't recommend that based on the fact that we just broke above a previous high. And so therefore the throwback risk is quite elevated at this point in time. All right. Arbitrum. Arbitrum looks decent here. Uh, you know, we are moving in sideways consolidation. We are forming higher lows. We did just form our third higher high on the daily. Unable to actually make the big move and break out above, but I do love where volatility is right now. Volatility is quite low. We can see that this range is contracting. So ARB is gearing up for a big move. Hopefully it is to the upside because I'm long on Arbitrum. Uh, but, um, you know, we've had these nice bullish pullbacks uh, it, between these EMA clusters, the 21 and the 55. So beautiful. Uh, we, we just had another pullback opportunity buy right there today on 196. So if Arbitrum uh, is about to make a move, uh, it just gave you another buying opportunity down here at 197.04. I would continue to try to accumulate between 195, uh, you know, between the 21 and the 55 exponential moving average right here. Um, and look for that, look for that breakout. Of course, you could also just wait for volatility expansion now at this point in time. Uh, TSI is pointing upwards, so bullish. And RSI is tracking above the signal line. So, uh, you know, we could have gone in here. Uh, but you know, pretty volatile range. Arbitrum is very wicky right now. Uh, so, you know, again, just looking at price points, a nice close above 218 would be very nice at this point in time. It's kind of confirming the bullish breakout. Uh, we don't have that yet. So again, logical pullback zones are going to be, uh, the EMA cluster between 191 and $2. Optimism. Optimism is okay. Optimism was suggesting a buy here on March 5th uh, because we have volatility crush and then volatility expansion, obviously big breakout candle. Uh, and we are just kind of basically forming a bull flag right now. Price just moving sideways after a big breakout. This is typically bullish. Uh, we usually just see immediate rejection if price is going to reject. Price moving sideways at resistance is typically quite bullish. So optimism does look good. Uh, SUI, all right. Uh, we traded SUI once. We, we had a good SUI trade last week, guys. What do we think now? I'm looking at the daily. And I see that the daily is pulled back into that EMA cluster. All right. Obviously, we had a kind of a, a, a more pronounced sell off right here, uh, but now trading back up at that EMA cluster. So I think SUI actually looks pretty good here. Um, TSI is not confirming the, the trade at this point in time. So we've had, you know, like basically such a pullback now at this point in time uh, that we basically, uh, basically, I, can't, I think what I'd like to see now is price break back up above and close above this demand zone. So I'd like to see price close above $1.70 on SUI, and then we'll go back in on SUI. I think that's the plan. Link's still doing what Link does, all right? You know, big wick up to the upside here. Uh, let's see here. TSI is crossing above on this daily candle, so might actually be giving us a signal to go swing long. Strong support at $19.99. Let's just call it 20 bucks. Yeah, strong support at 20 bucks here on Link. Volatility is relatively low. I mean, this is a scary area to long, <clears throat> but yeah. I think it might be the play. Uh, BNB, absolutely parabolic. Let's see here. And then re-entry here. So uh, the, the strategy is suggesting swing long on BNB, not entry right now. Obviously, the strategy is uh, actually recommending that we uh, be start to take profits now at this point in time because we are redlining. So we do want to be 50% out of the trade on BNB. Matic. Uh, let's see, we kind of gotten chopped up a little bit here, unfortunately, by the RSI. Uh, but TSI has managed to remain above. So life's good. Little regular bearish divergence here on Matic on the daily time frame hasn't played out. Um, Volatility is also not maxed out, so uh, I feel neutral on Matic. Uh, I I I wouldn't. Traded either way. ApeCoin. CSI's crossed back under, so we definitely want to be out of the long trade now on, on ApeCoin. And let's just see if we kind of hold the current level. 
uh, if we pull back to the 200 MA. XRP, big beautiful movement out of XRP today. Shout outs to the XRP army right now. <laughs> uh, let's see here. On XRP on the daily, uh, TSI managed to stay above this whole time. So TSI kept you in this trade. Beautiful. Love to see it. Um, yeah, listen, uh, you know, RSI is crossing back up above the signal line today, but we have red line volatility. So, I mean, it's a big, beautiful breakout, but I would probably recommend people be about 50 to 80% out of the trade on XRP. Aptos. Nice bullish pullback to the 21 EMA. TSI is above, but RSI is crossed underneath and we're kind of pulling back from redline volatility. Um, so, you know, flat on Aptos. Cardano, flat on Cardano. Dogecoin, uh, we'd be out of trade. Big, beautiful move on Dogecoin. We took profits on our Dogecoin trade. Polkadot, uh, Polkadot is crossing back up above. So uh, Polkadot, I don't think is the best signal, but it is, it is a signal. Uh, Uniswap is giving a bearish cross under right now. So I would be out of the trade. Bitcoin cash. We don't trade that. Filecoin, uh, it's crossed under. I would be out of the trade. Uh, Axie infinity. We could continue to hold maker USDT. We could tentatively continue to hold. Uh, I would be 50 to 80% out of the trade. Ethereum classic. I would be flat. YFI. I would also be flat. Phantom. I would be flat as well. All right, so that's our major pairs there. Let's see here. Yeah, we've got a bot. We've got a lot of token unlocks this week too. Uh, Arbitrum, Aptos, ApeCoin. Yeah, about $2.7 billion worth of token unlocks are, are, coming, on, are coming on this week. $2.29 billion in Arbitrum. $327 million in Aptos tokens. And $36 million in Ape tokens. So I, I think the question is just, um, with Arbitrum, uh, that is probably the asset that stands to have the, the biggest impact from the token unlock, especially with us kind of hanging out and consolidating and grinding these upwards emas. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So now a couple of requests went in Dow short Cardano. You got it, Alex. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I know we had a request for injective and then, uh, AVAX for Mr. Boris here on the weekly time frame. Oh, excuse me guys. All right, let's check out Injective. Injective USDT. Uh, I mean, I really like the look of this, this long consolidation above resistance, this long consolidation holding our bullish EMAs right here, as long as we are able to maintain this. And I mean, this has just been, I mean, this is what Moon and Papa calls AB trading, right? Consistent resistance, cons or excuse me, consistent resistance, consistent support, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, account building trading. Um. Yeah, I really like this injective chart, honestly. Um, injective, one of my kind of favorite assets right now, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but that's what we say about the things that make us money. Um, if injective was to have a pullback, where do we have support? At the 200 EMA, about 36, 37% pullback down to 2697. Uh, if you're not in an injective yet, that's kind of where I'd watch to get in. Anytime we can get a pullback to the 200 EMA is very nice. Um, TSI kind of just punked us out here on the daily time frame because we crossed under and now we're crossing back above. RSI is not quite there yet, so we don't have confirmation. Um, but volatility crush uh, lets us know that uh, we might be gearing up for a big move. And we are moving up, uh, making higher lows. 
So this would be our third higher low. So this all this all looks really good. Um, injective looks good. I wouldn't do anything right now. Uh, you know, the strategy is a couple days away from a signal, maybe a day away, maybe just a little bit more bullish for a signal. Uh, but injective definitely one to watch as we coil up and prepare for a breakout or breakdown. Uh, either way, injective will be interesting to trade. Uh, AVAX weekly for Mr. Boris, the man, the myth, the legend. Avalanche on the weekly time frame. Um, let's get rid of our indicators here for a second. And well, uh, AVAX broke out of a falling wedge. And so, yeah, so already, already, already basically smashed that trade. And you can see, yeah, just that 618 retracement on that wedge is where we had consolidation. Let's see where we are right now. Yeah. So basically now we're, we've just got resistance right here, right? Resistance right around $53 on AVAX. Okay. Let's check out. So we have this low volume note at 52.66, all right? Uh, I think if we can get above this low volume node, life's good. Uh, well, not what I wanted. All right. So let's just mark off that level of weak blue resistance. Uh, we can see it correlates to, again, uh, basically where buyers stepped in previously on the, on the way down in 2022, a uh, little bit of consolidation where buyers stepped in back in 2021 and represented strong resistance back in March of 2021 as well. So low volume nodes, uh, price either will tear through them. And if we can't, so the point is, I want you guys to really understand this about volume nodes. Um, high volume nodes, uh, can be resistance and low volume nodes can also be resistance. Um, but the low volume nodes, I think, are the most important to pay attention to uh, because low volume nodes are areas where there's little liquidity. So price has no real incentive to go there or stay there for very long, right? Now, we can see low volume nodes become high volume nodes, okay, because price can choose to go there and then people decide to trade there and that's fine. Uh, the market evolves. Um, but for from trading practicalities, uh, low volume nodes are areas where you either want to you either want to, if price were to come into this low volume node right now, the first thing you would think to do is you would think to short it, right? Because low volume nodes are where we're going to see the, the, the vast majority of rejections. It's where stop losses are. It's where liquidations occur. And we often see price reverse very dramatically away from those zones. If on the other hand, price breaks through, uh, then you can feel relatively confident that that will act as support uh, and that prices can go up. All right. So again, obviously vice versa, if prices are going down and the situation is something of support, but yeah, that is, that is the way to, that is the way to trade and consider low volume nodes. Uh, so avalanche right here is potentially making a double top. Uh, it is also potentially gearing up for a breakout. Okay. So I think that it favors to be a bull right now. Um, bulls are good. Uh, we do have a re-entry signal actually on this weekly closure right now. Uh, volatility did reset, not a full crush, but reset. And we now have expansion to the upside. Uh, so a little bit of a riskier trade, uh, but definitely a valid trade. Uh, you're definitely going to be getting a little bit more alpha here than if you wait for the breakout, right? 15% more alpha. Um, and you know, I think this is a pretty, pretty well-regulated trade, right? We actually, we pretty much just want things to go in our favor immediately, uh, or they're not going to. That's my thoughts on AVAX for you, my brother. Mm. Coin shares. Okay, so I can get the asset flip from coin shares. All right. That. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're just, they're just posting it. Okay. I see.
Hey, no problem, brother. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Al uh, let's see. Aliosa wants me to check the bottom feeder RLC trade. Let me take two genders. There it is. Uh, RLC. Yeah. Yep, Sigma signal. Uh, actually, this is probably a Lambda signal, but it's just the way it's coming up. Um, yeah, so bottom feeder did fire. Uh, the signal was generated yesterday, so the trade should have been opened up at daily close yesterday or daily open today, whatever, however you want to consider it. It's the exact same price. Um, and we have TP of 48.44 and SL of 3552. Uh, this will likely DCA into a position. So again, as always with bottom feeder, the vast majority of trades do not trigger a safety order. Um, but the trades that do trigger a safety order tend to trigger multiple safety orders, I would say. So if you guys are going to be trading bottom feeder, again, beautiful strategy. It's made me a ton of money. It's making money, money as I sleep. But uh, just be aware of that. All right. Um, pull back on BTC and now nothing but buying. see here uh yes to crypto i'd love a revisit to coq and degen coq got a new all-time high and degen is just plodding along the price targets were chef's kiss perfect made some decent money trading them well thank you man i am glad you did um let's uh yeah let's let's go check in with the DeFi of the DeFi. uh you know again public service announcement i already told the group um i uh uh i i was holding um layer ai um, I still really like layer AI, layer AI uh, but I am taking profits here. I'm up about 500%. So I'm just going to be taking my profits on layer AI and waiting for a pullback uh, to re-enter. Yeah, that's AVAX, right? Hmm. <sighs> I got Jushue, I got you, man. I see you in the Discord. I will do um I'll do ton. Okay, COQ, pretty interesting. Um, we, you know, again, trading in this kind of bullish megaphone pattern. It's an ascending broadening wedge, but we're just gonna call it the bullish megaphone. Yeah, look at that volume decline. Declining volume is always bearish. Declining volume is always bearish. This kind of looks like COQ made us see in the end of it. We've got a high, lower high, and kind of our first dramatic sell-off right there. I mean, that's the that's the most dramatic sell-off I think COQ has seen since, since this sell-off from February 24th down. Obviously, this one's very dramatic. Um, but this is a sharp sell-off. It's a very sharp sell-off. And now failure to make a second high and coming back down, I mean, the next step would be a lower low, right? And we are back inside. Uh, and wow, oh my God, look at that. I didn't even notice that. Look, I said pullback target. And like, that's literally where price went to. That is insane. That's crazy. Um, yeah, we do have the, the, the measured move moon target up here at 79.86. But as far as COQ goes, um, I mean, listen, you know, Yeah, so TSI has even turned over. So I trust I trust TSI. I think it's one of the best indicators out there. Yeah, volatility redlined right here. Volatility is coming down. Yeah, TSI is crossed under. You know what that means. It means I'm bearish. 
Um, or, you know, maybe not so much bearish, but I mean, I do see two possibilities. Um, you know, we're at the 21 EMA right now. So we could see, it, we could see this be a local bottom and price move up. We can see the 55 act as support. Um, but any, either way, if, if you know, that's, that's starting to look rough. Um, this is the main thing that I just, I noticed immediately when I look at this chart now, uh, cause I haven't looked at COQ since last week. Uh, but I see declining volume. Oh, man, draw like an extra, extra sketch. Uh, but I see declining volume and I see a lower high. And I see TSI cross underneath. And I see volatility peak here at the, at the height and coming back down. So I think I'm, I think I'm short-term bearish on COQ, guys. Yeah, I think it's good. Um, you know, you get back into Moon Boy territory for the breakout. Look at the previous declining volume. I mean, I don't see any declining volume in this rally. In fact, when I see, I see volume rising here and declining here. And as soon as volume started to decline, we had a 32% pullback. We had a 32% pullback on COQ. And chains. What's AVAX doing? All right. Um, Avalanche is still printing 892. Not too bad. Let's click in here. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I mean, Trader Joe is still seeing inflows. But, um, yeah, do we have like bearish divergence? I guess there, no, there wouldn't, wouldn't be any divergence. Hey, Ali. Yeah, man, I'm sorry. This looks short-term bearish to me. Unless we can close back above. Um, I mean, we, we need to we need to close above like six, like basically 6,000 now at this point in time and make a new high. Um, I would be, I'd probably, I would be flat on COQ. Like, like hold the position, like that's totally fine. I mean, but we're also like, this has been a, a fucking fantastic rally on COQ, right? Up 300%. I would take some profits here. I would take some profits, lower high, declining volume. Yeah, I do think this declining, I wouldn't say it's different. I just don't see, oh, you mean this declining volume? Oh, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, we did have a little bit of declining volume here, didn't we? And then the breakout volume. Yeah, you know, what's funny is like, you usually don't get to see something as clean like this. Uh, cause I spend so much time on the daily time frame that you don't get to see it as clean like this. So it's a little refreshing to come down to the four hour time frame and actually see just very uniform rising volume. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it does look different to me, you know, because previously, like we just kind of went sideways, like came down here, got scared. And then we immediately came back up with a powerful movement back up to the top of the range. Um, here we have lower highs. We have lower highs and lower lows. And this consolidation has already lasted longer than this consolidation. This was very quick. So yeah, I do think this is different. And the drop in, the drop off in volume is very is much more dramatic and it's much more uniform. Yeah, I would watch. So I just draw a trend line right here across these highs. And if we break this, we can go swing long again. Um, and we can buy pullbacks at 43.57. Although I probably wouldn't want to buy in the middle of the structure at this point in time. Although I don't think this structure is very legitimate. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I think this ascending trend line is good, but I think this one's speculative. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, I don't, man. I appreciate you though. Um, I can make my own thumbnails. Appreciate you. 
Um, let's see here. Okay, who's next? D oh, Dgen. Yeah, we'll check, take a quick look at Dgen on the base chain. Oh, that's Avalanche chain, base chain. Are we going to be able to... Chat. Are we going to be able to look at Dgen on deck screener? If you will recall, all last week, this was our kryptonite. We were unable to look at Dgen on deck screener. And it's still happening. What is wrong? Not Dgen. Not Dgen. Oh, man. Excuse me. <sighs> Ali, I am not. I am not. I'm using this. I'm using the default settings across all time frames. I find it's good. I mean, uh, as always. Um, you can always get better short term results by optimizing settings. But if you can, if you can, if you can find good general settings, then you will avoid over optimizing. Both approaches are totally fine. It just depends on what your time frame is and what you want. You know, typically, if I'm going to optimize something that's higher frequency, like something that's going to be on the 15 or the one minute time frame, then absolutely, yes, I'm going to make sure that I get all my settings correct. But if I'm trading a general strategy or a Swiss Army knife strategy, which is most of my strategies, um, that's not hyper optimized to the market and the volatility and just wants to generally catch trends and movements, then I'll use default settings usually. It just depends. Uh, for BBWP, I use default settings. Okay, so um, you know what that means. Um, over to Gecko Terminal. Uh, yeah, here it is. Region West. Oh, okay. Now I got it. Cool. Degen on the daily. Degen on the daily. Gecko terminal is so slow. It is absolutely ridiculous. Um. All right. So TSI is still bullish on the daily time frame for Degen. Uh, we are grinding down this descending trend line, and we are holding the twenty one fifty five EMA cluster nicely. All right. Um, so overall, I think this is pretty good. Unfortunately, uh, we, you know, RSI is not really confirming with the trade. Does look like we want to go back down to the bearish control zone. Um, and BBW volatility did peak right here and is on the decline. So I think Degen is probably going to pull back down to the bottom of this channel, uh, down to 276. Triple zero, 276. If we do not break to the upside here, uh, we need to get a, we need to get a nice close above, I'd say 3,100 at this point in time. Uh, and we need to kind of break out of this, 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 uh, descending broadening channel, descending broadening wedge, broadening wedges are no good. Yeah. I was on logarithmic. I mean, so yeah, make it a little nicer if you want on linear scale same thing oh yeah that'll affect the price my bad i guess ooh that's nasty isn't it yeah That is nasty. I just said some nasty words to you. I apologize. Yeah, so like, listen, on one hand, we are holding the EMA cluster and we are technically, we did technically form a higher low, but like no follow through whatsoever, right? Um, yeah.
Let me think here. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I just don't see... There's not too, too, too much to talk about here with DGEM. Like, very clear bullish signal. As I said, if we can break above 30... Well, not even 3,100. If we can break above, like, 2,500, probably, actually, now that I'm seeing this not on log scale. Uh, break above 2,500 would be fine. I mean, but a break above, yeah, like I said, 3,100 would be much more convincing because that would be breaking above previous resistances, current resistances. Um, you know, I'd like to see support hold here for the bulls at about 1,272, about 1,300, 1,400. That's basically where our daily 55 exponential moving average is coming in at. I'd like to see that continue to hold. I'd like to see the 21 remain above the 55 here as well and price actually go for a breakout. If we lose that 55, I mean, we do have support uh you know at 767 but it starts to look a little dicey it starts to look a little a little sketchy uh let's see here you are a wrench what's going on profit bear want to take a look at that jesus coin we'll take a look at that jesus coin and then uh we got to be thinking about wrapping up thank you ollie appreciate you man oh sorry oh my gosh uh i forgot about jushui uh, uh ton i gotta do ton for jushui and then, what did I just say I was going to do? Jesus. I got to do, do T-O-N first because Jushui asked uh, quite a while ago. And I, I can't believe I just forgot that. Uh, so we'll do T-O-N and then we'll do Jesus. Uh, and then I think we're going to bounce. Okay. Daily. T-O-N. Uh, we'll look at it on KuCoin. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot of chatter about TON, um, and I can see why. Uh, breaking above previous resistances, new all-time high, basically, for TON, as far as KuCoin is concerned. Beautiful at $3.20. Uh, let's go. So, all right, first things first. Bullish trend, obviously. I not take a genius to see that. Uh, we're above the range point of control, which is coming in around $2.26. We're above our 200 exponential moving average. We're above our 21 exponential moving average, our 55 exponential moving average. TSI is bullish. RSI is bullish. Uh, BBWP is telling us that we could still technically have room to go because uh, we had a nice volatility reset and now some beautiful expansion and we're not quite redlined yet. Um, again, TSI would have had you, our, our, our strategy would have had you in this trade on this initial breakout, but again, redlining volatility. So we might even miss this one, I'm not going to lie. Um, and then, yeah, now the re-entry signal and a big breakout. Yeah, just kind of a difficult one to, to get um, for the trending breakout strategy anyways. Um, you know, but actually not all is bad. At least you would have caught this little trade. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Yeah, red line volatility. Um, we're above all highs. I mean, this is a beautiful thing. This is, this is a very beautiful thing. Um, chance of throwback, completely, completely likely. Uh, you know, again, so what is a throwback? That's when we make a breakout, but we're unable to sustain and we get thrown back. Um, so 20% pullback potentially back into the 21 would, would, uh, would stop people out. I could see that as a move. So I wouldn't get initially scared on a pullback here to 262. Um, again, this looks pretty good. We, we've kind of consolidated for a long time now. I think TON is ready for a big move. I think the alts are ready for a big move. <laughs> did I say what did I say what did I say Wally or something? I don't I don't recall myself saying Wally. Oh, it's like my microphone weird. I got nothing. Yeah, TON making new highs. Listen, man, hold the position. Just, yeah, I've just told TON, man. Yushui, good job. You said you're in at long from 2.7. I don't know if you, oh, oh, two, oh, 2.7. Yeah, then hold the position, man. Like, yeah, you're not, in, you're not in a situation where you want to be taking profit right now. You're up 20%, but like, you know, seeing all this and finally breaking above a high, like, and you're going to give up now? No, nah, man, come on. I'm not saying that, that 
TON is just going to tear off, but I feel that the risk to reward is absolutely in your favor. Oh, yeah, I was saying, uh, yeah, 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 I was saying thank you, Ollie. I do got a good friend named Wally, GBU Wally. Dash looks dashing. I'm long on Dash Crypto Meister, so you got it, man. All right, um, one last thing, one last thing, one last thing, one last thing. Um, arrows continue. See, that's the thing, guys. You know, I want you to, you know, listen, I, I don't have all the answers, right? I don't have all the answers. So obviously when I see something like this, or when I see something that's like gone straight vertical, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to think about it as a principal trader because I want to trade for a lifetime. I don't necessarily want to do what is the most optimized thing to do right now. Cause optimal is often the enemy of good. And I want to be a good trader. I don't want to be the most optimized trader. That's, that's a, that's a that sounds exhausting. Um, so, but you know, we're in crypto guys and things are really bullish, right? So you see these big charts, like, and you got to make that, you have to make that decision, right? Because on one hand, you want to be a principal trader. On the other hand, this is crypto, right? And the bull market doesn't last forever. And, you know, the right risk at the right time pays good dividends, you know? So you got, you, you always have to balance risk and reward, risk and reward, risk and reward, right? Um, Jesus. Yeah. Jesus coin. And then I got a mouse. What am I looking for here? Is that just on Ethereum? Um, I mean, listen, Jesus is not looking too bad, man. You know, we are in, I would say, I mean, we're really in consolidation. We're really not in a bullish trend. All right. Cause we could potentially draw this channel right here, but I mean, the other way we could draw this too is. bit of a falling wedge which I like and I think we broke out of and when we break out of a falling wedge the way to trade it is you target the 382 to 618 zone okay and we've hit that right we broke out of this falling wedge and we've now hit that take profit zone all right so basically we're neutral for now, right? We're basically neutral for now. Um, you know, are we going to enter into, um, are we going to enter into a new phase of price discovery with prices pushing to the upside? I don't know. Right now we can very clearly see this very strong resistance to the upside. Uh, if we put VPVR on, I bet we could see that that is a low volume node. All right, VRV, VPVR is taking forever to load here. Hey, challenged investor, good to see you, man. How about 70% investing, 30% trading portfolio? I think that sounds really good, right? I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, right? Like I have made more money investing in crypto than trading in crypto, but I've also made like good money trading crypto. And trading is, you know, it's it's more, it's free. You know, you feel, I think, you know, trading feels empowering. It feels good. I enjoy it. It's what I like to do, it's fun. Um, investing is less rewarding because it's all about delayed gratification and that's very difficult to do it's not pleasant <laughs> you know delaying gratification is not pleasant it is the opposite of pleasant right um but yeah um anyways i don't know man we got listen jesus coin we got buyers snapping up around 1108 we do have resistance right here at 2202 though all right so um, on swing trades, I would, I would be, I would be peeling some profits on swing trades right now that, you know, like any range trades right now. Um, and I just be holding that moon bag to see if we continue to, to, to accelerate on up. Um, yeah, but right now, I mean, this does kind of look like the distribution at the highs. I would really wouldn't do, do, do anything too dramatic right now. 
uh, because we do have a higher low, higher low, higher highs. So, you know, I, I kind of want to let that play out. So we just don't really have enough data yet on which direction we're going to move. I think we broke out of a falling wedge and at the profit target. So it's like kind of trading. I would be neutral right now on Jesus coin uh, because I would want to see a, a nice breakout of this range at this point in time to kind of confirm bullishness and say like, okay, well, we're going to go to like the 618. Like potentially we're going to 3774. So I can see that. All right, guys. I appreciate you swinging by, but that's about it for me today. I got to get out of here. You guys have been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Um, if you guys want to support the channel and everything that we do, make sure to hit the like button. Uh, if you want to support us a little bit more, you can become a channel member, get access to some cool exclusive stuff that channel members get. And ooh, big buys, big buys, big buys. Uh, and of course, it links down in the description to everything you could possibly need. If you would like to join the premium trading group, get access to our signals, our technical indicator suite, our market updates, our weekly mentoring sessions, and much, much more. All of that information is on the website as well at crackingcryptocurrency.com. And the link is down there to copy trade me as well on Faradesk. All right, guys, trade safely. And I will see you guys tomorrow afternoon. Cheers now.